Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another video on my channel. Today we're gonna comment the first game which ended in the vacancy uh, tournament. Uh, it's called Tata Steel Chess Tournament and it's first tournament in um, 2020 and in w it's one of the most important and prestigious uh, tournament in uh, chess history. It started in 1938 and firstly it was the tournament for uh, only Dutch people uh, but once the uh, Second World War um, ended, there is a lot of players who, who were invited, international players, so it was more open. And a lot of famous players, a lot, a, a lot of the world champions won that tournament. Uh, Max Ove, uh, Boris Spassky, Mikhail Botvinnik, Mikhail Tal. Um, Korchnoi won that tournament, uh, Anatoly Karpov, Nigel Short, uh, Kasparov, Kramnik, Ivanchuk, and of course uh, Magnus Carlsen. And um, interesting, um, interesting winner was in 1989 and it was Vishwanathan Anand. And that was his first one in that tournament. And now imagine that 30 years later, uh, he still play in this tournament, so he still play in this in this tournament, and now imagine the thing that all other players were not born in the moment when when Vishwanathan Anand won in 1989. That that's incredible. But actually, uh, this story is n it's partially true. I mean, it was true until a couple of days ago when uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi uh, resigned from this tournament because he said he is too tired and he want to just uh, prepare for the candidate, candidates um, tournament uh, this year later. So um, another uh, player joined uh, Sergei Vityugov and Vitugov actually was two years old when uh, Anand won the first um, first time this tournament. And uh, yeah, this tournament is also known as Tata Steel Tournament. Uh, it lasts for last 10 years and that happened because um, there is a new sponsor. So um, from 2011 it's called Tata Steel Tournament and we have very, very nice um, intro from that tournament so feel free to you know there see you see there click that button with i and then uh, you will see very nice uh, video very short it's only 25 seconds uh, long uh, but introduction of all players uh, on this tournament in 2020 okay that's being said let's see uh, who gonna play on the on the first board and it's um, Magnus Carlsen as white and actually his uh, ranking is uh, 2872 is actual ranking um, nowadays uh, on 11 of January 2020 and as black we have Anish Giri uh, interesting player because he born in uh, Russia uh, he is half Russian half Nepalese and then he grew up uh, for a couple of years in Japan, uh, six or seven years. And then he moved to Netherlands with parents, of course. And now he, from 2009, he represents Netherlands. Okay, that's being said, let's jump on the board and see what happened. We have C4 by Magnus Carlsen, Knight F6 answered by Giri. So we have uh, English opening um, on the board, Knight C3, e5 very standard moves e3 by carlsen knight c6 and now it's a big surprise for all commentators uh, you know in the in there magnus carlsen play queen on b3 very early moving queen on b3 and uh, that idea was not played many times uh, in the chess history, but sometimes it, it was played, but not, not really popular idea. G6 answered by Giri, Knight F3, Bishop G7, 
And here, very, very brave D4, very bold, so uh, Magnus Carlsen play very actively. We have E captures on D4, E captures on D4, and castle by Giri. Bishop E2, D6, so opening the diagonal to, um, you know, move the light square bishop. We have uh, castle by uh, Magnus Carlsen, rook E8, and in this position, Magnus Carlsen think 20 minutes. So he spent 20 minutes uh, on his next move. And actually he play not very precise move. He played H3 and he missed some tactic, which is um, not really comfortable for him. It's not losing the game, but um, you, ca you can check the video also see there uh, click the eye and check what Magnus Carlsen said in very short interview about this move and about position and his chances uh, in the game and uh, Anish Giri of course play knight e4 very active move and it's quite strong move and uh, there are a couple of possibilities so, so here Magnus Carlsen, uh, if he plays something like bishop on e3, then the threat is um, knight go on g3. And this is what Magnus Carlsen talked uh, in the interview. So a not really great um, position for white, not much counterplay. Uh, Carlsen probably would have to take on g3 and after rook takes on e3 because there is no um, defender now uh, for this pawn maybe queen d1 as uh, magnus uh, mentioned in the interview bishop f5 g4 kicking that bishop but bishop can go actually on e4 uh, queen d2 trying to win the rook uh, but simply bishop takes on f3 and uh, actually now uh, rook cannot be taken because if the rook is taken um, then it's gonna be pinned and you know uh, Anish Giri would win the queen so it's impossible it's untouchable so would have to play bishop takes on f3 uh, bishop would take on um, d4 and then now we have a threat uh, some nasty discovery here so king h1 and uh, rook is seven or, or anything and simply in this position uh, Giri has extra pawn uh, maybe a little bit less active position um, and maybe white would have some attacking chances on f7 uh, but but still uh, it's uh, the pawn is the pawn so white would have to prove that um, they, they can handle uh, all of this so yeah, not 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 really pleasant uh, position for uh, for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, if he play rook f, uh, if he play after knight g3, if he play rook f to e1, uh, that's even worse because now this knight can go to f5, and this knight actually attacking um, this pawn, and this pawn so uh, attacking this pawn. And this pawn is attacked already three times and also attacks um, this uh, bishop and is attacked twice. So uh, not really great, not really great for white. So what would happen, bishop f1, one more defender for uh, uh, bishop on e3, but now knight c2 captures on d4, knight takes, uh, knight takes on d4, Knight takes on d4, everything exchange. Giri would even exchange the rooks and after taking on d4, everything is fine for, for black. It's even better position, uh, more active and it's uh, extra pawn. So I'm very, very great chances. Uh, maybe even winning chances, but probably uh, against Magnus would be a draw. Uh, I saw also a very good commentary by uh, Peter Swidler. He comments for uh, chess24.com and he tried to find some other chances after, after, uh, after this move. He tried to even attack the queen, but it also doesn't work. This, um, this actually is even worse. 
um, knight takes on d4 and now we have attack on the queen so queen can be taken and black ju just can exchange uh, this knight which is hanging uh, and take the uh, queen right now on b3 and here the rook is uh, under attack so uh, this uh, knight has to be uh, taken and here uh, black would just take on d8 and uh, still the same story black has one more pawn and uh, but it's even even better because black can st uh, can attack on on b2 so get one extra pawn would be not easy to defend that uh, black would have a much better game here uh, so in this position magnus carlsen just didn't want to over complicate the thing so he just takes on e4 we have rook takes on e4 bishop e3 now it's uh, quite playable knight d4 so uh, anish giri gonna get his pawn uh, but it's only temporary uh, knight takes on d4 bishop takes on e4 and if giri would take this uh, bishop on d4 then probably would uh, be the situation with extra pawn but magnus carlsen play bishop on f3 attacking the rook first and of course rook has to move so rook is moving uh, on h4 uh, and in this situation there is there is also um, Anish Giri uh, in his uh, interview because he also got interviewed and again you see this bubble with with i okay so go there and check interview of anish giri very interesting one how he could can handle a uh, game against the world champion magnus carlsen so i i really recommend to just go for that uh, that's the last interview i want to show you very good coverage by uh, organizer of this tournament really good so i'm very glad i can show all of this material and uh, make this this video you know more valuable for everybody uh, so so giri told that maybe he could sacrifice the rook uh, exchange actually um, sacrifice exchange and but he was worrying that after after moving to f6 uh, the position is not so strong i mean it's 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 shaky it's uh, he, he would have to stabilize this first uh but it's not really easy this uh queen this rook actually can put some pressure on f7 and maybe even this bishop also uh can put this this, this pressure not really easy situation especially uh pawn on b7 is also under attack uh, really 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 hard situation for for uh for black so uh that's very good that he didn't um, go for this uh he just go uh, rook on h4 uh, magnus carlsen exchange with tempo so rook had to move twice bishop on b7 now and this is the move what you heard in interview uh, so magnus carlsen take back his um his pawn bishop takes on b7 queen takes on b7 rook c4 and rook a uh, to c1 by magnus carlsen and that's actually force uh probably force uh, giri to exchange there there is other option like he could play maybe a uh, rook b8 and uh, play some some moves like queen takes on b8 and and uh, play with queen against two rooks which is not comfortable for white uh, rook c7 uh, maybe um, a5 a4 queen d4 centralizing the, the the queen but it's not comfortable to play against two rooks usually two rooks stay better than and uh, then the queen but in this position with extra pawn uh probably it would be very very drawish uh position but but definitely more interesting uh anish giri in this position however just decided to exchange the rooks on c1 and uh, c5 as the uh, c pawn is attacked twice 
and we have uh, rook on d1 so uh Carlsen start to pushing on the uh, on d6 uh it's some pressure on d6 at this moment but we have rook b8 and um, in this position Carlsen just took on a7 uh, giri took on b2 and uh, what can i say uh it's not much to play for for both of the players it's um it's the ending where black has two uh, passed pawns and white has uh, one passed pawn so um there is nothing to do for 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 white he just has to accept the the draw so carlsen just do it by taking on c5 and and yeah D takes on c5, exchanging the queens this way. King goes on g7. We have rook on c8, so uh, putting the rook behind the passed pawn. Uh, but Giri just took on um, a2. Carlsen took on uh, c5. And uh, in this position, uh, the players um, agreed to uh, draw. So, uh, yeah, that's the first game and uh, i hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah see you in the next one